Welcome to Agronomy Moment. I'm your host, Wendell Cohen. We bring in people who agree with me, disagree with me, and above all, are not afraid to say it like it is. All right, guys, today, welcome back to us. We're going to talk to our podcast, this podcast, uh, Agronomy Moment. We're going to talk about post-emergence and run a really brief thing here. We're going to try to make this quick because we know you're busy. We're going to talk about managing a young corn crop in some of these first few weeks and the critical milestones that we need to be looking for, watching for, uh, to put us in the best position for a good crop. We don't know if this is going to happen, but what about frost freeze? What happens? Yeah. So in, in a frost freeze event, of course, uh, after after one of these, it's it's best to give the crop or those little seedlings a little bit of time to to recover before we make assessments. Oh, yeah. So generally with corn, we think about it being a touch, a little bit more uh, forgiving, if you will, yes. for our part of the world and where that typical growth stage is. Uh, when we are thinking about these risks as far as the, the cold temperatures, most generally speaking, we have our growing point still below the ground, yep. which would be before V5. Once we approach that V5 time frame in corn, we want to think about when we assess this, probably uh, if we haven't seen seen new growth, cutting, uh, splitting open that, that corn plant, corn seedling in, in half, and looking at the crown, the growing point, and seeing that if it is still a healthy growing point, uh, so remaining a, a whitish, greenish color, and if, and if it is, then we still have viable plant there, and if it is brown, we most likely have um, lost that, that corn plant. Yep. So to the flip side, soybeans can be a little bit more challenging as far as just where they're typically at with their growth stage, most most generally a little bit more critical of a growth stage for yes. soybeans with their growing point being above ground. So with those cotyledons being above ground, um, what we're looking for is a healthy hypocotyl. So um, kind of the neck of the soybean, if you will. And um, we, we want that to remain healthy, not brown. If it's brown and, and squishy, we've, we've, the frost has probably done it's it. It's game over. Yep. If it looks burnt to a crisp, it's yeah. probably <laughs> game over. But in saying that too, um, if we do have a survival at, at the cotyledons, the growing points, um, on either one, we still have potential there as far as healthy or uh, a plant that's able to recover. Yeah, I think that that covers it really well. And the bottom line here with, is, I think, is if you, as you absorb the bullet points we have up here, if this happens, um, give us a call. We'd be glad to come help walk because there's certain clues that can help give us a predictor of what happens. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with corn, we just need to be a little patient. Yeah, and, and it'll happen. And so, you know, the weather that happens after makes a difference. There's other aspects that can help improve that situation really quickly. Right. And in this photo, for example, we're looking at a couple of pretty ugly plants from uh, yeah. corn plants from last year, uh, last year's frost that we had. And these plants did recover. Yeah. They do look ugly. They it does look like they're pinched off pretty good from from growing um, out of that world. However, in these situations, if we're we're assessing these, what five days after, yep. I like to put flags by these plants. Mm -hmm. So then we can revisit them and see if they have actually actually pushed out and uh, look like they're going to recover. So just another little uh, tidbit there, uh, some way to mark mark these plants like this because not all will end up most likely looking exactly like this. Right. So just kind of a, if, if we are revisiting those fields, trying to see where we're at, if those plants recovered or not, or how well they are recovering, um, those flags are a good tool to have. Absolutely. They help you understand the percentage of loss versus success. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we will move on to our next thing here that can happen in our springtime, somewhere during that. We're just about ready to take off, start growing. We've had cold weather. I don't have a lot to say on this, Selena, unless you do, but just know that sometimes corn can look pretty ugly duckling out there with rapid growth taking place where it gets that twist and roping look. Yep. So uh, whenever we're looking at that 
that buggy whipping, we can see that buggy whipping as related to, to frost, um, mm -hmm. recovering from frost, or we can see that rapid growth also, that buggy whipping from uh, herbicide as well. So yep. there's a couple of things to keep in mind there uh, when looking at that. And then the purpling of plants, if, if we have had somewhat of cooler conditions, yes. we can see that anthocyanin build up, uh, which is causes that purpling, uh, purpling of the leaves and um, that that glucose concentration, like the bullet point says, um, we can see those things after emergence. And uh, corn tends to go through an ugly duckling phase every every year yes. <laughs> before it before its roots really start to reach out to the, that nitrogen, and it's starting that rapid uptake phase of nitrogen. Um, and, and once it hits that, um, we, we usually see those plants come yep. out of that a little bit. Another thing to be alert and to remind us on is watching for cutworm, armyworm, especially in high residue areas. Uh, noticing, re, you know, cut off plants, damaged plants from cutting. Um, needs to be examined, especially in cool, damp conditions. Yep. Yep, corn and soybeans both. So yep. Corn, uh, if it's been been cut, you know, while it's in the world, and you have that emerged, emerged corn plant, you'll see on the leaf that you'll have two two holes uh, mm -hmm. just symmetrical uh, that's just because it was in the leaf was in the oral um, and then uh, it got cut by a worm and so you typically won't see that until after emergence mm -hmm. but nonetheless um, that's kind of what that looks like and seeing Oops. right now er, early no you're good uh, early seeing those uh, alerts come in that uh, army worm cutworm yes, the are, have been found uh, the very north part of the state of Missouri. So again, like Wendell said, just keep an eye out for those. It's typically not a huge deal, but those times that it is, it's always worth the annual scouts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially those army worms. If, if we turn off, if we would turn off cooler and wetter, yep, you yep. probably want to be on the lookout. Just real brief, uh, just a reminder as you go forward from V5 on and watching that corn come out of its ugly duckling stage, um, be watching rainfall, be kind of doing some calculations, talking to your agronomist, talking to us is great. It's a good idea as you prepare for top dress and getting all the mechanics of what it takes to get this to happen, if you're going to do it or if it's needed. I wanted to highlight these two charts too, just to show you kind of how that uptake looks as we get into corn and, and sulfur uptakes, nitrogen on the right and sulfur on the left. And you know, as we get past that V6 time frame, we start really seeing an uptake really big in nitrogen and then also sulfur shortly thereafter. Yep. And just a little bit on that point, it seems like historically thinking of, of the best time to, to top dress waiting until, you know, V6 or after, but uh, through PFR and a lot of research, having it there, having, giving it an opportunity, that nutrient opportunity to get into soil, uh, into yes. the soil, closer to the root zone, by when the crop needs it, has... Very, very good. Yeah. Has, very high return. Yes. And, and I think we want to highlight too, is even though there's a big uptake, you know, as you get to V6 and on, uh, we should also take notice that it does take some from VE on, from emergence on. Mm -hmm. And so having just a little bit up front and then coming back in before it needs the big load can be uh, a good program to consider. So big point that I want to make here is be ready. Yep. Because weather moves rapidly, corn plants move rapidly, and suddenly we're staring at something we don't like to stare at. <laughs> So thank you very much, everyone. Anything you want to add, Selena, before we wrap up and go? Nope. We, we may add something to this podcast in season as it goes on. We did record this here just a little ahead of time so that it could have the information in front of you at a timely manner in case things get super busy. But uh, just know that we are here for you. Give us a call anytime, email, phone call, or whatever your favorite mode of contact is. Yes. It's going down the picket window and talking on the highway. That's works too. <laughs> See you. See ya. On the next one.